Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about basic infertility evaluation. Now, the initial most important step in the treatment of infertility is a thorough and comprehensive evaluation of both the husband and the wife. It is important to first find out if there is something wrong. Many times what happens is the reason for not conceiving is just a matter of timing. So once a couple knows that nothing is wrong with them, they are relieved of a lot of stress. And if the evaluation, if we find out that there is some problem which is identified, then the treatment can be directed accordingly and we just don't have to shoot in the dark for those cases. So the most uh, basic requirement for conception to occur is regular ovulation, which means the egg should be released regularly each month and on time. The second thing is that the uterus and the uterine lining should be good. Both the fallopian tubes should be patent, preferably both, even if one sometimes pregnancy can occur. And the last thing is that the sperm count and sperm motility should be good. Another fifth aspect that we do need to consider is that the wife should have a good ovarian reserve. So the first point is, are you ovulating regularly? Ovulation is expected to occur 14 days prior to the onset of the next menstrual cycle. So it is important to know whether you're ovulating regularly and if you're ovulating on the, at the right time every month. For a woman who has a 28 day menstrual cycle, ovulation is expected to occur on day 14. For a woman who has a 26 day menstrual cycle, ovulation is expected to occur on day 12, so on and so forth. Now, how do you test for ovulation? The easiest way to uh, guess that ovulation must be happening is if you have a regular menstrual cycle. But in spite of regular periods, if you have not conceived within a year of trying, it is better to objectively demonstrate that ovulation is happening. The other way to know that you are ovulating regularly is doing a serum progesterone estimation, which is a blood test which is usually done about seven days before the onset of your next period. And we have to see whether the serum progesterone level is uh, elevated or not. The third way and the most objective way of identifying or demonstrating that ovulation is happening is doing a follicular study. By doing a follicular study, the radiologist or the gynecologist can see the follicle developing and eventually rupturing to release the egg. The next thing is to know whether your uterus is normal or not. Having a normal healthy uterus is important for implantation to occur and for you to be able to carry your pregnancy to term. We need to know if the lining of the uterus is developing well or not. The best way to look for problems in the uterus is by a transvaginal sonography. The third thing is that both your fallopian tubes, if not both, at least one should be patent. If your fallopian tubes are unhealthy or damaged, pregnancy sometimes does not happen and also there is a higher risk of having an ectopic pregnancy. Now, how to know whether your tubes are normal and patent is best way to do is the HSG. If not HSG, you can do an SSG or a histolaparoscopy. Uh, the other thing which is important is that your husband should have a normal sperm count. Having good count and good motility and normal morphology of sperm is important. In fact, in about 50% of couples, we see that uh, the problem is in the male. It's a misconception that infertility is usually due to females. The problems are equally divided. Many times the problem is in the male. So doing a semen analysis early on is important rather than waiting to do the semen analysis to the end. One more thing which is important is to know the ovarian reserve of a woman. You have, if you have regular periods, it does not mean that your reserve is good. Usually in young women, we expect that the ovarian reserve is good. And as you grow older, your egg reserve is likely to decline. The best way to know your ovarian reserve is by doing your blood AMH level and also by doing a transvaginal sonography to see your antral follicle count. 